Okay, a very good afternoon, everybody. So today is the second day of our presentation, and uh, today is the afternoon, huh? second slot of the session. Uh, today, students are going to make presentation on neoclassical literature. Let us have a list of the students who are going to make a presentation, and let us also have a look at their topics. Also, we hope that today everybody would have written correct topics. Uh, and you might have learned from yesterday's suggestions also. So first presentation will be by Vishwa and it will be on Thomas Gray uh, overview. So again, you need to correct this title, Thomas Gray dash an overview that, or, or a study of uh, a poet Thomas Gray. That way you have to write in detail. Uh, Shivangi uh, will read on the rape of the lock summary uh, again title needs to be uh, rectified uh, capital l should be there in the lock uh, the rape of the lock capital l i hope you are writing so you will improve when you put the timestamp at that time don't forget to improve the uh, the title okay. uh, and then next one uh, will be by uh, third presentation uh, Maya, uh, problems of the modern one theme of tale of a tub. Uh, that is problems of the modern one theme. What is that? Hmm? Hmm? One theme means what? One theme means problem of the um, modern one theme tale of tub. No, but that is not proper way of writing it. Huh? More than one theme. So you need to still huh, work on uh, 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 this. Uh, make use of AI tools to get an idea for better title. We are doing that activity in the classroom also. But see, if you don't remain present or you don't participate in activity, then you can't do that. Huh? We have given you several activities based on chat GPT also how you can take help of that. So that can help you uh, in framing proper title also. So make use of those things. So you can get an idea that how a proper title can be framed. It can help you. Everybody, it is not only for a... Uh, As we talk, we class in the KG repeat PG class. So we need to improve on this. Kusum uh, Samuel Richardson and epistolary novel. Okay. Uh, Krishna on the symbols of the poem, the rape of the lock. Uh, again, there is a need for reframing the title. You can say a symbolic study of the poem, The Rape of the Law. A symbolic study of the poem. Again, capital P. Key words should be capitalized. Yesterday, we told this almost to everybody. Angraji, ma boilo at lakadat na samjayu hoi to Gujarati ma repeat karo. Keje mahatwana sabdo title ma ave, then a key words kewe. Ebadama capital sabdo thisaru karuje. Apre Gujarati Basama capital ke unahu. Elekadaj apre Gujarati lekhu yatir sudi to Angrejima ekhalna veke capital lakho joy, subda. Keywords at Vaja, Jarul lagetia, capital ni system. Apre matru Basama nati. Elekadaj manmana utre, abudusu capital ju, whichever chaiwakar. So, but you have studied BA in English, Tranvarastame, Angreji, BMA Benacho. How this is there. So again, today I have to repeat that. What we have repeated yesterday. Again, I have to repeat uh, the same things. Uh, Jayshri uh, on a tale of a tub uh, by Jonathan Swift. Okay. Uh, Jai uh, Solanki will make a presentation on the modern significance of the maid. Uh, uh, Pamela novel perspective again there is a problem in the title a uh, pamela novel perspective uh, is making some confusion pamela is a novel but if you say novel perspective means new perspective so what are you planning and a pamela novel is in single denoted comma 
and then there is a perspective so this, this is again not giving any sense as a title uh, here you need to still work on a, a proper title jay marunia jonathan swift as a satirist uh, here as can be small a as uh, is a, not a key word so key words uh, should be capital but the other words no need to have it as capital okay? uh jatin uh, will read on a tale of a tub title full title ma e aave chhe ke nathi aavto jatin ah so then it should be there no then full title should be written uh, uh, there a tale of tub you have written as satire on religion okay? uh, himali the story unveiled uh, the rape of the lock okay? divya thomas gray as a poet uh, asha will read on that will be the last one for this afternoon session the rape of the lock as a social satire again social and satire should be capital s there are key words there so i hope uh, tomorrow i don't have to say anything in making the title topic topic properly how to write that these are the mechanics of writing uh, and possibly you will make the similar mistakes when you write your answers also in the exam also if you write in this manner then uh, it will be very difficult that the assessor will give you proper marks uh, now you are a student of masters of english uh, and such mechanics of writing should be taken care of okay, okay let us start with the first one vishwa uh, his presentation Uh, stick to your time today morning there was a little bit longer presentation so uh, who is taking care of time okay. for, at for, fourth minute at the end of fourth minute uh, give a ring okay. uh, unmute unmute the mic also there okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I will talk about uh, Thomas Gray overview. Thomas Gray was born on twenty sixth December seventeen sixty in London. He was died. He was died thirteen uh, July seventeen seventy one. Thomas Gray was a traditional poet. neo classical age between uh, romantic age of 18th century he was an english poet letter writer classical sco scholar and professor professor of at cambridge he is widely known uh, known for his He is 
widely known for his uh, an elegy, uh, elegy right, uh, written in country church he had published in 1742. Gray was an extremely self-critic writer who published only 13 poems in his lifetime. Despite being very popular, he was even offered the positions of poet laureate in uh, 1757, though declined. Uh, his father, Philip Gray, was educated. Uh, Thomas lived with mother after she left, abusive and men mentally unwell father. Gray, other uncle, William became his tutor. Gray was a de delight cat and scholarly scholar boy who spent his time reading boy who avoided athletics. Uh, he went to Cambridge, but he found the curriculum activities dual and boring. He disliked his companion and fellows. He said these things are sleepy, drunken, dull, uh, literary things, uh, illiterate things. He spent time in reading classical and modern literature, but a friend helped him publish well, Paul. Horace Walpole said that he never wrong anything uh, easily. Gray came to be uh, known as the uh, graveyard poet. Gray wrote idea about death and morality. Most theme of poem, uh, poems was death. Uh, his important works, Ode on the Spring, 1742, The Bard of Pindaric Odes, uh, 1755 to 1757, The Fatal Sister in a, an Ode, 1761, <coughs> Prounded in the Tub of Goldfish, 1747, his uh, famous books, Alleg Allegory Written in the Country Churchyard, the poems of uh, Thomas Gray and selected uh, poems of the Thomas Gray. My reference, thank you. If you anyone question. <coughs> so Vishwa, how Thomas Gray is a traditional poet? Thomas Gray is a traditional poet. Uh, he showed in merit between a uh, neoclassical and a uh, romantic poet. Romantic edge, sorry. My question is that, what was Thomas Gray's famous line? Um, yes, Thomas Gray uh, uh, was a famous line in a uh, where ignorance uh, is a bills and ties uh, uh, folly to be wise. Thank you. Your curiosity should be to know 
then you will get an answer. Several times in the classroom we have discussed that uh, the problem of digital era is that we, there are answers but we don't have questions. Class attend kariye to ek kya la, class attend na kariye to ek kya la, na aave. Adha je baddam na kariya ki hoi talat bus ni chinta ho tu, onwani chinta ho chiyo. Ke bus chali da se talat bhaga bhagi kata, chalo class hoi kudu parto mu ke la, telo le na chal ta. Gana badaim karta ho se class ko mene khyal ki, gana to beswa aave te rishas pa chai. Ke bachche pa chai kya chao, chai ne kya bachche disturb karo. Ela apra jai hai di class. तो ये अपने अधूरे हो रही है जो बनवा ये लेते क्या रहे बने जिन्ना सकता है बने के नया स्टडी ना इन दैट मैन अच्छे हो गयी फुल टाइम फॉर द द स्टडी दैट इट यू हैव टू मेक अवे गमे तेरे ते ना रस्तो करबोंस पड़े तो बने सकता है इधर अपने क्या रहे बने ना सके इसलिए ये दिखे हुए पर बिना ना के Good afternoon, everyone. I will talk about the rape of the log, the summary. The author of the rape of the log, Alexander Pope. The rape of the log, in particular, satire has both uh, obsession with physical appearance and tribal matters by the people, 18th century England. The title of the poem tells ex exactly what happened in the poem. Belinda, one of the main characters, has one of the lock of hair stolen by the bearer. The Rape of the Lock is a mock heroic narrative poem written by Alexander Pope, one of the most commonly cited examples of high, high bur burlesque. It was first published anonymously in Linton's, in Linton's Mesequelancy. Poem and translation into Pentos, a received edition written by Pope, followed in March 1714, is a five canto version. Pope, uh, Pope posted that this showed more than 3,000 copies its first four days. The final form of the poem appeared in 1717 with the addition of Clarissa's speech on good, good, good humor. While Belinda is why? While Belinda is still asleep, her guardians sleep arrive. Four worms her dead. Some dread events impends. Belinda then awake and gets ready for the day with the help of her maid, Betty. Though unseen, also contribute this set, this set the head, and those divide the head. Some fold the sleeve, while others plant the cone. Here, Pope also described Belinda's two lock of hair, which graceful hung behind the baron, one of Belinda's suitors, greatly admired this lock and conspired a steel one. Building an altar, he places on he places on it all the trophies of his former loves, set them on fire, and fervently fervently prays soon to obtain obtain and long possess. 
Ariel disturbed by the impending event, although not knowing what to leave, what it will be summer, summons many sylphs to her and instruction them to guard Belinda from anything about anything that may befall her. Whether she forget her prayers or miss a, or miss a masquerade or lost her heart or necklace at a ball. So protected, Belinda arrives at hometown court and is invited to pray, invited to play a game of combat. The conspiring, the conspiring baron acquires a pair of scissors and tries to snip off, snip one of her locks, but he is prevented by the watchful sylphs. This happened three times, but in the end, baron succeeds. Also cutting a sylph into although Pop's resource also parodying a passage in Paradise Lost that Eddie substance soon untied again. A gnome named Umbriel now journeys to the cave to sleep and from the queen received a bag of signs of certain person and the and the word word tongues. And a while filled with fainting fear, soft sorrow, melting griefs, and following tears, and bring them to Belinda, finding her rejected in the arms of the woman. Woman tells it. Umbriel pours the contents over them both. Many, many people moved by Belinda's grief demands the lock back, but the Baron is unrepentant and, and the refuse. Clarissa admires them to keep their good humor. But they will not listen and instead battle ensues with glares, songs and wits as weapons. Belinda fights with the Baron and throws snuff with his snuff his nose subdue him when when she demands they to restore the lock. However, it is now where to be found. It has uh, conclusion. The poem concludes with the poet himself claiming the overall victory as he has written his beautiful poem. Commemorating the loss of the log and his own poetry job for all eternity. Poetry and Alexander Pope rather than vanity and pity, quarreling with the end. Thank you. Any question? what does Belinda's hair symbolize? Uh, Belin, uh, Belinda's hair symbolized that uh, uh, importance of uh, female beauty in society. Shivangi, what is the Belinda full name in Rape of the Log? Uh, Rape of the Log, the Belinda's full name was uh, Uh, Erebrele Farmer. Farmer. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Maya Bhatia. My topic is problem of the modern author in tell, tell of a tub. Tell of a tub by Jonathan Swift about the author born 13th November 1667, died 
19 December 1745. Jonathan Swift was Anglo-Irish poet, satiric, essayist, and political pamphleteer. It was his uh, these days when he would write most of his greatest work. Swift's father died months before Jonathan was born. In 1694, he took religious order in the search of Ireland and then spent a year as a country person. Swift Ireland was a country that had been effectively controlled by England for nearly 500 years. Swift wrote mostly poetry in the later years of his life and he died in 1745. Works of Jonathan Swift. First, Gulliver's Travels in 1766. Second, A Modest Proposal, proposal in 1739. In The Battle of the Book, 1704. A Tale of, the, of a Tub, 1704. The Ladies' Dressing Room, 1892. Character of Tale of a Tub. First character, character Peter. Peter, one, one of three brothers whose father, on his de deathbed, wills each of, of them a new coat that is guaranteed to last a lifetime given the proper care. The father provides detailed instructions for such care and enjoying his sons, Peter, Martin, and Jack to lie together peace, peaceably under one roof. Allegorically, he represents the Pope or Catholic church. Jack, Jack, Peter's brother, after his break with Peter, he began to even even the extreme zeal of dissenter or reformer. He and Martin wished to rediscover, discover and honor their father's will. Jack allegorically represent John Calvin. Martin, Martin the third brother who providence the satiric norm and is such the least developed and the least interest, interesting of the three, representing Martin Luther and the Church of England. Martin lacks the vitality that animates the radical cause and merino of his brothers. Theme of a tale of tub first. Through, through Christianity adheres to the Bible. Second, only moderation can fix excesses. Three, problem of the mod modern author. About a uh, problem of the modern author. The author is a modern writing in the modern manner. The tale, it has so much more thinking, more power, more color, than any of the works which are indisputably his. Much evidence, of course, can be adduced to support this evaluation. The rise of the popular press, press in Britain has somewhat democratized both the writing and reading of literature, leading to an explosion in works written of a middle of broad readership. At the same time, influencing Augustan writer, writers and critics venerated the ancient whose literature they often attempt to imitate. Conclusion is the end the author loses his train to throw. We can assume that he brothers argue into perspicuity to conclusion discussion ending and whether to book will sell. Then we come back to Martin, Peter and Jack's 
skumal and well as a discussion of the nature of war this is my references thank you questions maya who is the father of english satire the father of english satire jonathan swift he was right uh, irish uh, poet essayist pamphleter and satire any question What are the three of allegory? Three of allegory. First, <coughs> um, biblical allegory. Second, uh, classical allegory, and third, modern allegory. Thank you. The question needs to be improved. We have to also learn. The next one can come and see. We also have to learn the skills of asking questions. Something is present there to ask something more on that. That way you have to ask. Uh, not uh, a very simple question like what is the full form of this or uh, this one, father of so and so thing. Three of allegory again requires training. There's a three types of allegory. What is three? Types, kinds. Uh, so be serious. In drafting questions, putting questions, don't take everything in a mocking style. There is a lot, lots of mockery in literature. Your classical literature is satire and mockery, but you are not supposed to mock what we do. You have to take it seriously. So start learning. I thought maybe uh, this all things because you have not attended most of the classes, so you are not aware about how seriously you are supposed to behave. Uh, when you do any of the activities. Can I start, sir? Respected Dilips and all dear students, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kusum Sarvaya. Uh, in today's presentation, I'm going to deliver uh, a presentation about Samuel Richardson and epistolary novel. Table of contents. Uh, these are some points which we are going to discuss in my presentation. Life of Samuel Richardson. Samuel Richardson is uh, remembered to the day today as one of the most important inventors of the novel form. Richardson was born in 1689 and uh, to die in 1761. Richardson has been apprenticed to a printer whose daughter he eventually married. Uh, his wife's name is uh, Elizabeth Leake, but uh, she was uh, he, she was as her his first wife. Ninth child of Elizabeth Richardson. Uh, Elizabeth Richardson is uh, is a name of her mother, his mother as well, Samuel's mother. He printed uh, nearly five hundred works. His domestic life is uh, quite uh, quite unpleasant, quite tragedy because his uh, first uh, wife, his uh, children from his first wife, they are died in infancy. Infancy. Richardson is considered the originator of the modern English novel and has also been called the first dramatic novelist as well as first 18th century sentimental writer this word is sentimental writer is a uh, very uh, important and uh, should be noted noted here because a uh, sentimental writer it means uh, samuel richardson has, has focused uh, some uh, uh, sentiments in his novel like uh, virtues values uh, morality purity as the uh, theme in his uh, novel central theme Four wheels of novel. Uh, as we know that in the English literature, we have a uh, four wheels uh, in uh, English novel, and Samuel Richardson is one of them. Samuel Richardson is stand with his great novel, which is uh, entitled Pamela. Henry Fielding is a uh, father of uh, English modern novel as well, and he stand with his great novel, Sir to the History of Sir Tom Jones. Toby Smollett, his great work is uh, Roderick Random, and Lawrence Stern, uh, his great work is uh, Tristram Shandy and his family. Yes, we have now this. Uh, what is epistolary novel? It is uh, basically a term uh, in uh, English literature. Refer to the work of fiction that are written in the form of letters. Like uh, we can say this, that uh, the work or the story which is developed through giving and taking letters between two or more than two persons 
it can be uh, considered as the epistle in a way. Like uh, there is a time when letters were the only medium to communicate with the far more uh, far uh, relationships like friends and families. So this epistolary novel concept of epistolary novel is based on that uh, old one uh, letter culture. So we can say this that uh, how Samuel Richardson is uh, uh, or uh, 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 Samuel Richardson is famous for epistolary novel because he uh, depict the old one letter culture in the modern novels. The first. Uh, English uh, epistolary novel is uh, Love Letters Between Noble Ben and His Sister. It was published in 1684 and written by Afra Ben. The first epistolary novel is written, written in the Spanish uh, language. Uh, this one is that I have mentioned here. It is the first English epistolary novel. Samuel Richardson has given this four, uh, three uh, epistolary novel. Uh, it is here, uh, Pamela. It was published in 1740. Uh, Subtitled Virtue Rewarded. Uh, Pamela, uh, when we are uh, go, uh, re reading this, uh, we can easily connect this that how uh, Samuel Richardson, as I mentioned, he was a sentimental writer. So Pamela deals with uh, virtues, with uh, purity, with sentiment, chastity. So how she uh, hold his uh, his purity in a whole situation, in a whole situation, whole is life. Clarissa, the or the history of a young lady. It was published in 17, uh, 1757 and the history of Sir Charles Grandison, 1753. Uh, let me conclude the, the topic here. A prominent figure of English novel, Samuel Richardson, has wrote three epistolary novels, as I mentioned. He worked in this genre as hard as it to survive in cur current time. Epistolary novel is a very creative type of genre, which deals with the old letter, letter culture. The, more, the main aim of epistolary novel is to connect an intimate space between the characters where we can see easily, uh, we can notice this in the, uh, in the uh, like uh, as we can take the uh, uh, example of uh, epi epistolary novel uh, Frankenstein. So here we can see this that how all the uh, characters, three characters are connected by no letters only. So here are some references and thank you. We can discuss the questions now. There is any questions? Kusum, who is considered as author of modern English novel? And do you know who is author of Indian English literature? Uh, yes, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Henry Fielding is father of English uh, no, modern English novel, and uh, father of English literature is uh, Mulkraj Anand. English literature, Indian English literature is Mulkraj Anand. And if you are talking about uh, uh, Hindi, Indian Hindi uh, English Hindi uh, Indian literature, then it will maybe uh, Bharat Edu Harish Chandra. But as you mentioned that uh, uh, English literature, so uh, it is uh, Mulkraj Anand. Thank you. Maybe Samuel Richardson has printing shop. Do you know about it? Uh, yes, Samuel Richardson uh, was a great. Uh, he has a successful printing shop. He have uh, uh, printed maybe uh, more than uh, five, uh, more that uh, more than five thousand uh, five hundred works, and uh, including uh, uh, Daniel Defoe, Sarah Fielding, uh, John Collier, uh, uh, all the all them works. Not only works, but he also uh, printed uh, pamphlets and uh, periodicals and uh, newspapers as well. Thank you.
Good afternoon to all. Today my presentation topic, the symbols of the poem, the rap of the law. This is my personal information. Alexander Pope. Alexander Pope, uh, he was born May 21st, 1688, London, England, died May 30, 1744, uh, Twickenham, uh, near London. He was a poet and a satirist of English uh, Augustan period, best known for his uh, poems, an essay on criticism, 1711. Uh, the Rape of the Lock, 1712 uh, uh, to 14, an essay on men, 1733 uh, to uh, 34. Introduction The Rape of the Lock, a mock epic poem in uh, heroic couplets by Alexander Pope. The first version published in uh, 1711 consisted of two uh, can uh, canards. The final version published uh, in uh, 1740 was uh, expanded to five canards. Symbols of the rap of the log, the log and second playing cards. The log. Belinda's uh, log of hair comes to symbolize the absurdity of the importance of uh, Aphrodite to female uh, female uh, beauty and uh, beauty in society. Uh, Pope offers uh, a hy hyperbolic uh, hyperbolically metaph metaphorical uh, description of the two locks in uh, Canor's two. This uh, absurdity only grows as the poem. Uh, progress and after the Baron has a snippet of uh, Belinda's lock. Second, uh, playing cards. In the poem, the playing cards that uh, Belin uh, Belinda, the Baron, and another uh, gentleman use in their game of uh, Omber symbolize the travel nature of life and uh, court. Conclusion. The conclusion of the poem suggests that while the events may have seemed insignificant, they uh, reveal the absurdity and uh, superficiality uh, of the upper class society. This is my reference. Thank you. Anybody question? In poem, uh, there is an incident of cutting of lock, so it symbolizes what? The cutting of the lock, uh, for example, uh, for example, the Be Belinda, Belinda's uh, hair, Belinda's hair is uh, symbolized the uh, 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 symbolized the uh, beauty and uh, social status. Uh, the uh, the poem is the satir satirized uh, most important uh, of uh, so most important of super uh, super reality excesses, excesses of the uh, upper class society in uh, 18th century of uh, England making a Belinda's uh, Belinda's uh, represent the figure of a society. Krishna, what is symbols? Symbols, symbols is a uh, symbol in a literature of uh, in a literature of uh, important of a uh, character setting, uh, image, season, uh, season, uh, weather or uh, weather or uh, uh, something else uh, in uh, instant. Uh, 
in for the bigger idea thank you
Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Jai Shri Khachar. Today, I am going to give my presentation on A Tale of a Dub by Jonathan Swift. This is my personal information. And uh, this is the table of the content. I am going to start with Jonathan Swift, who is the author of the work. Jonathan Swift. Jonathan Swift was an uh, influential Anglo-Irish author and satirist who uh, lived uh, during the early 18th century. This period, known as the Augustan Age, was marked by a focus on a reason, the Enlightenment, and a resurgence of a classical ideals in literature. Swift's works, such as a Gulliver's Travel, a modest proposal, were sharp satires that created uh, the moral, poli political, and uh, social issues of his time. The early 18th century was a time of political turmoil, and Swift's uh, writing characterized by pre uh, precision and uh, irony, continue to be uh, celebrated for their impact on English literature and their exploration of human nature and society. Historical context of 18th century. Before I am going to start, uh, explain about a uh, tale of a dub, uh, let me explain the historical context of the 18th century. Religious context. The Anglican uh, church held dominance and uh, tensions persisted with the uh, Catholics and uh, dissenting Protestant groups. The Jacobite movement aimed to uh, restore the Catholics to a dynasty. Political context. Whigs and Tories were the prominent political factions, and the period began with a uh, Hanoverian successor. Corruption and patronage were prevalent. Social context. Economic and industrial changes, urbanization and colonial expansion were defining features. The enclosure acts and the industrial revolution reshaped the economy and society. Intellectual movements, the Enlightenment, was a key intellectual movement emphasizing reason, science, and individual rights. Cultural shifts, the period saw the rise of neoclassical aesthetics and a growing interest in literature, music, and the arts. A tale of a tub. Whoever has an ambition to be heard in a crowd, must press and squeeze and thirst and climb with an indefatigable pain till he has exceeded himself to a certain degree of a altitude above them. Now in all assemblies, though you wedge them ever so close, we may observe this peculiar property, that over their heads there is a room enough, but how to reach it is a, the difficult point. It being as hard to get quite of a number as the as of hell. This is the first lines of the uh, original novel after the preface, in which uh, Jonathan Jonathan Swift uh, tries to tell us that if uh, we want something, then we have to try for that. A tale of a tub is a satirical work by Jonathan Swift that uses humor and wit to criticize religious uh, divisions, intellectual excesses and the misuse of language in the early 18th century. The book is structured as an allegory with three main parts, focusing on the misadvantages adventures of three brothers representing different branches of Christianity, digression on intellectual and literary trends, and a call to return to the simplicity of the original faith. Structure of the tale of a tub, the tale, content, this is the primary narrative of the book and tell the story of three brothers who inherit a coat from their father. The three brothers represent the Roman Catholic Church, the Anglican Church, and the various dissenting sects. Significance. Swift uses the allegorical story of the court to satirize the religious divisions and the excesses of his time, the extravagance and absurd behavior of the three brothers. The digression. This section is a collection of various digressions and tangible stories that inter interrupt uh, the main narrative. Swift addresses uh, topics such as the misuse of language, penetrate, and ab absurd theories. The appendix. It, it's like a conclusion of the whole book. In, in the appendix, Swift uh, discusses the decline of learning and uh, reason in the modern world. He argues for a return to the simplicity and purity of the original faith. In a tale of a tub, Swift uses a layered narrative structure to weave together his critics of religion, intellectual, and literary excesses. So these are the themes uh, that uh, we can see in this uh, uh, tale of a tub, religious hypocrisy, political corruption and deceit, uh, literary satire, human nature and gullibility, 
excesses and uh, materialism satire on learning and knowledge critic of media and influence modern relevance a tale of a tub by jonathan swift remains relevant in today's society due to its themes of hypocrisy extremism satire media influence human nature and excess all of which are still observable in contemporary culture and institution swift's critic of these aspects of human behavior in the society transcends in the it's a historical context so how it is a uh, related with a po political like we are we uh, we know that in india so many politics are corrupted uh, they try to hide the main problem of the society with uh, a new thing they are uh, trying to hide the main po problem by uh, and uh, the title of the uh, tale of a tub uh, that means the sailor used the tub to uh, throw uh, attention of the wells in the another side so that can be also a significant uh, also can tell that uh, people use is the um, uh, another uh, another problem to hide the main problem conclusion a tale of photo by jonathan swift is a satirical masterpiece that uh, delves into the excesses and absurdities of human nature society and religion in its conclusion swift leaves as a with a thought provoking reflection on the intricate intricate and the often perplexing tapestry of human existence the work serves as a timeless reminder of the need for moder moderation reason and self awareness in navigating the turbulent water of life swifts biting wit and humor throughout out the tale make it a compelling and enduring piece of a literature in encouraging readers to examine their own beliefs and behaviors with a critical eyes anybody have a question so please This is my reference. What is the significance of three brothers in the tale of Adam? In the tale of Adam, uh, we can find uh, um, Peter, Martin, and Jack. Peter uh, represents a Roman Catholic Church. Uh, then Martin uh, represents a Protestant and uh, Church, and uh, Jack represents the uh, other. Uh, the disagreements of the church like uh, roman catholic church was a uh, father of the uh, roman uh, catholic church was a jesus christ christ so who was uh, peter uh, peter focused on uh, taking that court to as a um, how it was anybody else have a question so please ask टाइटलिटी जे कहीं पर काम करिए एक ही सीरियस नहीं करेगा तो फल तो से कभी कुछ ना एम ने दरेक बाबत कहीं पर होए सब ठीक करवाए डेफिनेटली शुद्ध कोई तो वहां पर अपने मेहनत से सारो करवा दीजिए कोई ना सीरियस नहीं जो के नहीं अपने आदत दे रही है बेस्ट परफॉर्मेंस का प्रूव हो जाए क्वेश्चन इज नॉट कमिंग सी
Krishna and the other two was. If you subscribe the channel, then you will get automatic notification. How does Jonathan Swift background and experience influence uh, themes and satirical element in a tale of the Yes, Jonathan Swift was a clergyman. Clergyman means uh, he has a uh, uh, he has a place in a church, and he was also a politician. So he knows that what is uh, the corruption going on in the politics and religious. So this can be seen in his works. Thank you. Hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is Jay Solanki and today I am going to deal with the modern signification of the maid, a Pavela novel perspective. 
so first we will see my uh, personal information Here is my personal information now we will talk about the table of content so first uh, we will uh, discuss about introduction of samuel richardson second 18th century and uh, pamela is made third is made of the modern time this is uh, uh, a main point of this uh, presentation and then we we can come to the conclusion let's talk about the introduction of samuel richardson samuel richardson the english novelist was born on august 19 uh, 1689 in Maxworth near Derby, Derbyside, England. He died on July 4, 1761 in Parsons Green near London. Richardson is knows, known for expanding the possi possibilities of the novel through his invention and use of the letter form, creating the uh, epistolary sorry epistolary novel so his major works uh, his major novels include pamela and clarissa uh, the pamela is uh, 17 uh, 1714 and uh, clarissa is 1747 to 1748 so uh, in uh, the uh, when we continue the the presentation i will talk about the pamela and uh, his character so richardson born in magward due to uh, due to temp temporary move of the family to Derby Sand, but returned to London when he was 10. He had what he referred to as only common school learning and received in, in, uh, sorry, in attitudes of his education who later be subject to, of concern for him and some of his critics. So now we will uh, come to the main part of the presentation. Pamela is made. So as the Pamela novel is, uh, uh, is a character name of Pamela, is a uh, novel's uh, heroine. His, her virtue is under attack and she is certain about her self-identity. Self so in this novel, you can find that uh, uh, she is a very, for, for uh, like uh, we can say lower class, he comes from a very lower class family and he also trying to find his uh, self-identity. Economics necessity has separated her from her biological family. So economics, he is a very, uh, her uh, economics, uh, social uh, condition is very low. Uh, because of that, uh, she is, uh, uh, is uh, separate, uh, separate from his family. She struggled with not fully belong to either social sphere she has been trained for. So she is not uh, trained for uh, to become uh, like mad or something because of uh, her uh, like economic and social condition condition is uh, not that uh, much. That's why is uh, uh, sorry she, she is uh, uh, become mad. She is educated for to in a sorry in a consi sorry irreconcilable station in life causing her discomfort. So uh, like his, his she, her education is not uh, like too much we can say because uh, he is working on the uh, other, uh, he is working as a maid on in other uh, house or uh, other people's. Pamela feels uh, torn between serving his uh, mistress and return, uh, returning to her, to her poor family. So now we can find out that uh, his family, uh, sorry, her family, and she is uh, she was very uh, uh, separate because of uh, like uh, we, as I talk, talk about that uh, his social and uh, economic condition are not well, and because of that uh, she is very uh, separate and uh, very far from her family. Despite his stature, stay, sorry. Despite his status, the servant or maid Pamela receives more attention and affection from others household, household member. So in uh, when uh, uh, like uh, Pamela is uh, working uh, in uh, one house that uh, one lady is taking care of Pamela more than uh, like his, uh, his daughter, her, her daughter. So now uh, the main topic uh, when uh, is come to the comparison of 18th century and the modern century or or we can say modern era 
so in 18th century as a, if we can found as a made a made perspective there are two uh, like two things are very uh, much higher when uh, uh, we can say when uh, as a woman as a maid is not like that a woman is uh, not in in power of uh, the 18th century but uh, domestic violence and sex, uh, sexual relation is very high uh, like we can say very high and very uh, um, big problem of 18th century as a samuel richardson used a young female servant uh, maid as his correspondent to contrast changing attitude toward women children and domestic so here samuel richardson also a uh, comment or we can say he like a uh, in a way we can say satire on the 18th century also that how you can uh, use use the women as uh, uh, like uh, as a tool or something but in in a way uh, like a samuel richardson uh, again again uh, trying to uh, convene in this pamela novel so right now we can come to the main point of this presentation made in modern time so like uh, if if i say that 18th century and uh, like today's today's time is uh, like uh, we are very different that uh, as a uh, when is come to the women equality is uh, also in uh, in this uh, like we can say in this uh, topic so in exploration of litigation in early modern england excellent excellently course so in the early modern england there are uh, many courts are the, that uh, if maid is uh, like uh, been seduced or uh, sexually harassed by anyone so she can uh, uh, go through the court and uh, she can uh, tell or she can uh, like uh, 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 made his rights focus on expression of idea about young women in court so is like as i said they all uh, like uh, in the women equality they are also made include in that because the modern uh, is we can say when uh, we are uh, looking at the 18th century that 18th century made are very uh, like uh, not speaking too much to others or not speaking to the upper class or something but is in modern time there is a different way that uh, if maid is uh, suffering uh, harassment by any one or uh, he, uh, she will uh, like she is in uh, any uh, problem of the person who was uh, like uh, uh, doing something uh, seducing something or uh, sexually he, sexually is uh, doing something so uh, he, young uh, or a young woman or maid can say to it archival evidence detail relationship affect by chart of sexual and social behavior as i said the sexual and social misbehavior include the maid to uh, <laughs> say to the society or other as well in modern time young women objected to family matrimony strategy voice of young female servant commenting on surrogate families and uh, witness testimony revealed legal social culture and expect expectation of for young women in transition transition from childhood to maturity so in like in in where if i say in short way that in modern time there is a very different different uh, perspective are showing in women young women or we can say it made that 18th century is not showing in uh, his his era or uh, in in this era so now we come to the conclusion as i say the pamela is a novels of heroic face identity crisis and moral dilemma as her virtue is question so if pamela is not don't know about what is she doing so is a question is asking herself as question that uh, if it is okay to be here or not she is torn between the her education for to uh, completing social was causing inner conflict so in about her education is uh, still like uh, like in mind is thinking that now is a good or bad thing so in inner conflict we can find out the novel explore litigation in early modern england except is quote and shedding light on uh, societal perspective of young women as i said the uh, early modern england is uh, like a very different one uh, 18th century england actual art 
Archival evidence reveal in impact of charge of sexual and social behavior on relationship. As I mentioned in the earlier slide, that how sexual and social behavior are is uh, not too much uh, like in uh, modern time, but at 18th century is very highly and a very big question from that century. The voice of young women's servant comment on their expression in Suramatum Sur family. So, uh, so different different family are uh, like uh, doing their uh, uh, is like we can say the lower class or something but sometimes they are uh, very uh, high high uh, high <coughs> sorry high class uh, not questioning them the why they are doing this so they are being so quiet in that so now I will end my uh, presentation and this is a reference and thank you everyone for listening now you can ask me question. The word is archival, not archival. C H H is silent, so only C is pronounced as K. Archival. And H is silent, so it is not Ch sound, but K sound. So I want to ask you, Jay, that what causes uh, discomfort for Pamela in the novel regarding her education? So in Pamela, we can find the like uh, major thing is like his economics and social condition. Because of that, her education is not uh, like that much. As I said, the, uh, her family is very poor uh, in background. So in uh, about his education is like a big question for uh, her character that how uh, her character is uh, uh, in a way we can say that uh, her family and uh, other are how seeing that because of the ec economics and social condition next would we rather have children or not So what is Pamela's main struggle in a novel regarding her virtue and self-finding? So and in Pamela novel, the character of Pamela is uh, like uh, he, she is struggling for uh, like uh, too many things. But the, the main thing we can find out that uh, Mr. B as a character in his novel, he is uh, he is seducing or uh, like uh, uh, in a way we can he trying also trying to rape her. Or uh, we can uh, also like find out that how uh, pa uh, Pamela is uh, trying to you know going uh, uh, far from uh, uh, Mr. B, but still we can found the uh, conflict or uh, like we can say the uh, the social uh, social uh, behavior because of the upper class and lower class, and because of that. Uh, uh, his uh, main struggle was given because of Mr. B. Okay, thank you, everyone. Yes, uh, if you read that message, it was sent yesterday. You read that. Teach students, after KG Manasi, 
Hello, good afternoon all. Today I am dealing with Jonathan Swift as a satirist. This is my personal information. Table of content. First, I introduction of Jonathan Swift, uh, definition of satire, Jonathan Swift, early works, satire technique, impact of Swift, Swift satire, citation, and then conclusion. Introduction. Jonathan Swift is the one of the most remarkable British writer of the 70th and 80th century. He is well known for his work like Gulliver Travels, A Tale of a Tub, A Modest Proposal, etc. Swift is also distinguished for his political pamphlet, essay of, of course satire. Modern literary critic distinguishes Swift as a, he is one of, one of the greatest satirists in the English literature. Swift uses specific satire called juvenile, juvenile it means any bitter and ironic criticism some contemporary person and institution that are filled with a personal in, invective, a angry moral indignation and pessimism. Is a Jonathan said famous quote, satire is a sort of glass wherein beholders do generally disco discover everybody face but their own. Jonathan Swift, early satirical work. First, a tale of talk. This work, a satirical ex uh, exploration of religious and political themes. It is a complex elogical text that uses a variety of style tones from mock heroic to the gross tube. The Battle of Book. This is the short satirical work in which uh, Swift humorously de depicts a battle between books representing ancient and modern scholar. Draper's letter. Under the pseudonym M.B. Draper, Swift wrote this letter as a protest against the impo imposition of wood al alphans in Ireland. His style is direct, passionately patriarchic. Patriotic and railing in Irish against British economic exploration, a modest proposal. We have one of the most famous works, Swift suggests a satirical solu solution the uh, problem over population travels. Gulliver Travels st uh, stands a classical example of his satirical uh, genius using allegory and uh, fantasy to expose. The Follies and Vice of Society. Definition of Satire. Satire, uh, satire easy, easy definition is a uh, uh, use of uh, witty humor and uh, uh, humor, wit and uh, parody men uh, uh, to contrast in social, uh, social and political commentary uh, to the time. Type of Satire. Horatian satire. Horatian satire tends to be good nature and light hearted, looking to rise, la uh, laughter to encourage mo moral improvement. A famous example of Horatian satire is the 18th century poet Alexander Pope's poem, The Rape of the Law. Juvel Juvenalian satire. Juvenalian satire tends to be more bitter and dark, es expressing anger and outrage of state of the world. A famous example of Juvenile and satire is another, another 18th century writer Jonathan Swift, a modest proposal. Many pain satire. Many pain satire is a re reserve for the prose work. Satirical resemble the original connection of satire, miscellany, and uh, contenting multitude. Satire, uh, satiric thing. This is a, a satirical work uh, Jonathan Swift. Uh, uh, use the uh, satiric attack. First is irony. Irony. Swift was a master of verbal irony, where the intent meaning of statement is opposite in literal meaning. 
an excellent example in modest proposal where in the suggest a improve improvement here is family should sell the children as a source of income Sar sarcasm swift, swift frequently employed a sar sarcasm a form of verbal irony character characterized by the mocking contemptuous of lang contemptuous language parody swift often used parody a technique where he imitated exaggerated the style of writer work ridiculed them hyperbole Ex exaggerate exaggeration is the another common technique in Swift satire, double entity. Swift something includes a double meaning and ambiguous language to create humor and irony in, in his work. Swift target. In, in this satirical work, Swift uh, modest proposal. Modest proposal is a satirical essay in that target several, several specific individual institute and societal issues. Swift primary targets British government and politics in Ireland. Ireland. Swift also target in well, wealthy English land uh, roads who were absent land roads in Ireland. Impact of Swift's satire. First, literary satire. Swift's works are prime example of satirical literature. He used the humor and wit to critique flaws and absurdity of society politic and human nature. This uh, style of uh, satire influenced George Orwell and Volunteer is a uh, in work political and social commentary. Swift satire often took uh, at the political and social injustice of his time. A modest proposal, for example, was a scathing uh, critique on British exploitation of Ireland. Swift legacy. Swift works remain relevant and influence in contemporary literature and political discourse. His use of irony and exaggeration to expose hypocrisy and corruption is become a template for modern satirists and political commentators. His impact can be seen in the work of satirical television show, cartoon, and androidical color. Conclusion. Jonathan Swift is a renowned Irish author and satirist left at the indelible mark of the literature through scattering to thought-provoking provoking satirical work. His wit in humor were powerful tools through which critic in social, politics, and moral issue on his time. In conclusion, in conclusion Jonathan Swift's legacy is a satirist induced in work continued to be studied and appreciated for insight commentary on human nature and society. This is a reference. Thank you. Now, ready for question. <coughs> so, Jay, my question is, can you provide example of specific specific works by Jonathan Swift where he implements satire to critique political or social issue of his time. These um, many uh, Jonathan Swift uh, main uh, uh, major work is a uh, modest proposal, Gulliver Travel, and uh, Tale of the We can see the uh, social and political uh, social and political main aspect of uh, Jonathan Swift. So there there are example uh, are uh, employed, employed a satire to critique politi political or social issues on his time. So then my question is, what is the impact of uh, Swift's satire in contemporary time? The sweep satire in contemporary times. The several um, is a major uh, work is a uh, Gulliver Travels, modest proposal and uh, tale of the. We can see you e, e, in contemporary times. Uh, we can see ke in Bollywood. Uh, Bollywood. Uh, Bollywood time. He use a uh, tale of a tub as a. Uh, a tale of a tub is a contemporary time to movie making on Jajantaram and 
જજંતરમ મંત્રમ તો એન સટ સ્વિફ્ટ સટરિકલ ટેકનિક ઇઝ અ મેની મેની સટાયરસ યુઝ ઇઝ કન્ટેમ્પરરી ટાઈમ થેન્ક યુ Good afternoon everyone. Today I am going with the tale of the Beza satire on religion. First of all, sorry for your uh, some spelling error. Tale of a tub. A is missing in front of tail and tub. Here is my personal information. It uh, contains about writer about a tale of tub, satire on religion, the role of characters, power of satire and reference. about writer Jonathan Swift was a Anglo-Irish satiric author essayist and poet he was born in 13 November 1667 Dublin Ireland his father died before his birth and he is left in the care of his uncle Godwin Godwin provides Swift with a good education Swift graduated from Trinity College with a master degree between time period of 1691 and 1694 Swift wrote a number of poems notably six odes his major work tale of tub 1704 an argument against abortion in christianity published in 1712 gallier's travels 1724 and a modern proposal 1729 he died in uh, 19th 19 november 1745 dublin ireland about tale of tub a jaisri mentioned all of thing is is her ppt but here uh, we are getting some brief information about it author jonathan swift published of year 1704 type prose satire genre satire tell the story of three brothers rep- representing different branch of christianity a tale of tub is most impressive of the three composition in tale of a tub for its imitative wit and command of stylish effect notably priority the 11 section that make up a tale of a tub alternate between the main allegory about christian history and ironic digression on modern scholarship Here is my main point, satire on religion. A tale of a tub by Jonathan Swift is a satirical work that has touched a religion among other subjects. The first one is a religious fiction. The story used three brothers to represent different Christian demonation, Roman Catholicism, Protestantism, and Puritanism. Swift satires the division and conflict among these fiction. Religious hypocrisy. Swift criticizes the hypocrisy of religious leaders who claim to follow divine religion principal but often behave in corrupt of self servicing ways this is seen the character of peter martin and jack <coughs> questioning authority the work challenges the authority of question institute and their claims of claims to divine knowledge suggesting and they can be just as a fable and self servicing as any other human endeavor critic of human nature the character in tale, tale represent different aspect of human nature reason faith and epitaph swift used this character to satirize how humans often priorities their base priorities their base desire over the supposed religious convention in this ment of religion fantasism through the character of jack who is a fanatically observed with the buttons swift satirizes the danger of religious extremes and geology the role of characters jack a proud proud of a new religious sects 
that emerged during Swift's time showing their obscurity and lack of substance. Martin present the Protestant search and its emphasis on individual interpretation of scripture. Peter symbolized the Catholic search and its script adherence to tradition. Power of satire. Social commentary. Satire allowed the author to use humor and criticize, expose the foes and wives, include the society. Pursue effect. By employing in irony and exaggeration, satire can provoke truth, provoke thought, and challenge common beliefs. Entertainment value. Satire appeals to readers by offering a unique blend and wit, humor, and intricate simulation. Satire is also opens a new way for uh, understanding uh, particular works and novels. In a conclusion, a tale of tub challenges readers to question religious dogma and consider the consequences of blind faith. The theme explored the text remain relevant today, shining a light on contemporary issues. Here are some references. Thank you for your understanding. So, Jati, my question is, what are some specific examples of religion figures or institutes that are targeted for satire in Tale of the Talk? Jonathan Swift uh, used uh, some specific example in a tale of tub like uh, Father's Will, the Three Brothers, and uh, Courts, and uh, Father. Uh, they, have, they all are re re representing some different value, like uh, Three Brothers are uh, represent a different branch of uh, Christianity, and the Father's Will is a Bible, and Father is a God. There are some example for he is a satire on religion. Who's next? Jatin, what role do the three brothers play in Swift's satirical commentary religion? As I mentioned in my PPT, the three brothers are a three bra different branches of uh, Christianity. The first one is uh, Peter. He represents a Catholic church. And second one is uh, Martin. Martin is represent a pro Protestant search, and the third is Jack is a Puritan search. So thank you, everybody. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Myself, Hemali Parmar. My presentation topic is the story unveiled, the rap of Tilak. Here is my personal information. Points to ponder. First, introduction to the poem, the rap of Tilak summary, literary devices, symbolism in the poem, historical context. Conclusion. Introduction to the poem. The Rape of Tilak was written by Alexander Pope and first published in 1712, then revoked and published again in 1714. The poem is a mock epic that satirizes satir, satirize the upper class in London at the time. The story focuses on the central character Belinda, whose lock of hair is cut off at a social gathering. Although trivial to most, Belinda is outraged that her lock of hair has been cut by the baron. In the rap of the lock, Pope uses Belinda and the baron to mock two of his acquaintances, Arabella Fama and Lord Petro. 
the rap of the lock summary the rap of the lock is a is a poem based on a true incident where the baron snips a leg a lock of belinda's hair at a party leading to a commotion pop turned the story into a long poem divided into section called cantos akin to akin to songs in an album despite the dramatic incident the poem concludes with the lost lock making it a unique tale literary devices mock heroic element in the poem mock heroic elements are prevalent evident through the portrayal of inconstant deities and the epic treatment of human issues the central problem is presented in a manner characteristic of mock heroic style enhanced by rich emotions and passionate expressions pop's satirical tone directed at 18th century social society directed at 18th century society contributes significantly to the mock heroic essence additionally supernatural elements further augment this style making the poem a complex and multifaceted literary work symbolism in the poem the lock in the rap of the lock belinda's hair symbolizes her value and power her social status and marriage prospects are linked to her untouched hair the poem's line imply a deeper meaning emphasizing societal norms and gender roles historical context the, the story behind the story pop wrote the rap of the lock because his friend john carroll carroll's friend lord petre had cut off a lock of cut off a lock of arabella farmer's hair causing a feud between their families to lighten the situation pop wrote the poem he was asked by a mutual friend to write it as a joke to bring the families back together after the incident conclusion the rap of the lock by alexander pope is a satirical masterpiece that critiques 18th century society's vanity and social norms through its clever use of literary devices and symbolism the poem offers profound insights into human behavior understanding its historical context enhances our appreciation making it a timeless reflection on soci- societal values this exploration reminds us to critically examine our own beliefs making the rap of the lock not just a literary classic but a catalyst for self reflection here is references you can ask me question so emali my question is that what is the tone of the poem and how does it contribute to overall message the tone of the poem is uh, playful and making fun of uh, people's uh, concerns it's like a poking joke poking joke and uh, highlight highlighting uh, people's concern at that times okay, next amali what is the center theme of the rape of the lock and how is it present presented in the poem the central theme of the rape of the lock is uh, social satire poem satirizes uh, frivolity and vanity it it critiques uh, the triviality of uh, people's concern thank you so in this question you will find lots many errors uh, when you say at then there is no space and then you write himali then what it is capital w what is the central theme of uh call uh, this column then no space Double the word comma that you have used. There is no space after that. The title is written, and then without space, you are closing by the word comma. And then how H is not capital? 
grammatically the question is correct, but there are many other technical errors of which are known as mechanics of writing. This all we have to be very careful of. We are normally you might be using lots of things to chat and other things, but you are never conscious that I have to be careful about the use of language, comma, space, where I do checking. So we cultivate a bad habit of doing this. And so when we do this practice, we come to know that all at all these places we need to improve. university <laughs> ખ્યાલ <laughs> The last questions were good. But the Vijay Vajra Prashna grammatically such a quality wise also good. But this all the mechanics of writing also we need to take care of. A very good afternoon to everyone, respected sir and friends. Today's my presentation topic is Thomas Gray as a poet. This is my personal information. These are the topic which I discussed today. Life of Thomas Gray, education, major poem of Thomas Gray as a graveyard poet, poetry and style, and death. Life of Thomas Gray. Thomas Gray was an English poet, classical scholar, and professor at Pembroke College, Cambridge. He was born in 26 December 1706, regarded as the foremost English language poet of the mid 18th century. He was very self critical and published only 13 poems and while during his lifetime. Refused the post of, as uh, we find that uh, uh, Thomas Gray uh, was refused the post of poet laureate in 1757. Best known for his poem, he was very famous for, for his el elegy writing in elegy written on uh, country churchyard. This was published in 1751. Gray was the fifth of 12 children of Philip and Dorothy Gray and the only one to survive infancy. His father was violent and mentally unwell and that's where we find that his mother leave him. Gray lived with his mother after his parents separated. Education of Thomas Gray from 1725 to 1734. Gray attended Eton College which his mother paid to for him and go to. His uncle, Robert and William worked there and helped him too in education. Here he also met the, bo the both friend, we find that Richard West and Horace Walpole. They both are best friend of uh, Thomas Gray. These are the major, major poems of uh, Thomas Gray, Ode on the Spring, Ode on the Death of Favorite Cat, Ode, Ode to a Distance Prospect of Eton College, the Bard, a uh, Pindari Code, Elegy written in Country Searchyard. This was a very famous poem by Thomas Gray. 
the fatal sister and odd the progress of voice of indirect code the bard and the progress of voice this both are the pondery code written by thomas gray as a graveyard poet we find that the thomas gray was known as the graveyard poets and a group of 18th century poets english poet who know unlike their rational neoclassical contemporaries emphasize subject like mystery melancholy in their poems along with subject of death immortality morality and gloom which were often actually as a graveyard poet and they, this poet are known as the graveyard poets one of them was uh, we find that thomas gray known for his uh, elegy written in country churchyard which was, which was published in 1751 poetry and style of thomas gray gray was largely influenced by travel throughout in britain particularly in lake district he was one of the least productive poets and his collected works published during his lifetime we find earlier that he was only published 13 poems during his whole wild life amount of fewer than 100 li- 1000 lines he was very self critical writer and uh, fearful of failure that he he only published 13 poems during his lifetime and uh, we find that he also refused the uh, post of uh, poet laureate fellow poets richard, uh, richard west was the person most dear to gray and we find that he was a uh, best friend of uh, thomas gray his death inspired gray to seriously begin writing of uh, poems after his death uh, gray dedicated a poem to a west title of this poem was a sonnet on the death of his uh, best friend richard west Grace poetry often combines uh, traditional forms and poetic diction with uh, new topics the figure of the poets he, in his poems he often uh, write about the lonely alienated and marginal one now the death of uh, thomas gray gray died gray, gray died on 13 july 1771 in cambridge following a uh, weakness and illness he was buried alongside with his mother in church yard of uh, gill church in stock poses this uh, this is a famous line by uh, thomas gray poetry is a thoughts that breathe and words that burns now the end wind up uh, thomas gray was a poet during the sensibility movement and uh, which meant his uh, strive to evoke emotion and his uh, his reader rather than teach them how to think uh, as uh, was the case before during the neoclassical movement these are the references and thank you very much now anyone have a question regarding so divya why is thomas gray known as the graveyard poet we find that thomas gray known as the graveyard poet because uh, during the 18th century the most of poet uh, write about the subject matter of death immortality morality and uh, loneliness and that's why uh, we consider as the uh, thomas gray as a um, graveyard poet anyone divya in which year thomas gray refused the post of poet laureate in uh, 1757 uh, uh, thomas gray refused the post of poet laureate So good afternoon everyone. My topic name is the rape of the lock as a social satire. This is my personal information. The rape of the lock as a social satire. Uh, rape of the lock uh, as a witty satire against the pops and their 
balance. Uh, balance mean, uh, means a woman who are uh, busy with uh, appear, appearance uh, beautiful. Uh, it is a satire on uh, fashionable dandies and ladies of, uh, of pop's age. Uh, is it, it is a powerful satire of that day uh, aristocratic uh, section. Uh, it is satire against uh, feminine frivolity. It was uh, published in, in 1712. Uh, uh, Alexander Pope uh, represented a mirror to the 18th century uh, aristocratic uh, society. So the question is a uh, reason for the why Pope's uh, the rap of the law can be called a social satire. So satire on uh, vanity of 18th century this English England England society it, uh, uh, explore their exp excessive belief in their own ability and uh, attractive to others. Uh, it is a uh, satire on fashionable men also mentioned that lady when not uh, different from men in this regard. Uh, and uh, it is a beauty of the rap of the log. The poem has not ever just uh, from the psychological perspective yet it is a matter of fact that the poet shows mental psyche of, of those people through a social satire here i put uh, uh, one line uh, from a poet uh, with variety when it is from every part they shift to moving toy shop of their heart then satire on males and females. Uh, in the poem, uh, we can see female character Belinda, who is belong to aristocratic class. Then uh, male character Byron, who is uh, cut off the uh, lock of Belinda's. Uh, then uh, it is beginning of the uh, poem. The poet starts showing the laziness of the upper class. Uh, Belinda wakes up from sleep and uh, sleep again. So it is a man. Uh, an uh, example of this uh, poem, nothing was worry about it. Uh, then social satire on noble ladies of that century in uh, rap of the lock. Uh, men tried to make a good uh, impression in front of ladies. Then uh, satire on materialistic uh, relationship. Uh, uh, relationship between men and women were not real at all. Uh, example, at Romeo and Juliet once lived, uh, they showed they're busy in making affair, uh, affairs and they were affected to real relationship. Uh, they of uh, honor and social satire that honors had no value in eyes of those people. Uh, no purity, uh, purity in uh, those ladies living in uh, 20, uh, 21st century, living relationship uh, without marrying. They target every relationship. Uh, people do not like the friendship of those people who are inferior to, uh, to them. When Belinda's lock was cut, her friend uh, left her alone. This incident is a social satire. And satire on MP, emptiness in a relationship between the people of that era. Then conclusion. Uh, thus, we can say that uh, the poet does not directly use any word against the standard standard of uh, 18th century England uh, society. Rather, he used the technique of social satire in his poem, The Rape of the Lock, to spread awareness about the follies of death people he covered almost everything in the poem from every angel uh, the rap of the lock scene a uh, poet that best defined the technique of social satire so here is my citation thank you now i am open for the question So, Asha, how does the tone of the poem reflect its satirical intent towards society? So, the tone of the poem uh, reflects its uh, satirical intent toward uh, uh, it is a combination of uh, witty, irony, and humor. Uh, uh, the poem employs uh, uh, more epic, uh, more more epic styles. Uh, uh, Alexander Pop uh, shows uh, about. Uh, Satire on 18th centuries. So 
such a migration is that which social class satirizes in the poem Rape of the Law? In the poem Rape of the Law, satirize, uh, uh, satirize in the uh, satirize uh, of uh, uh, aristocratic uh, or the upper class of 18th century uh, England society. So thank you. It was the last one. Okay, uh, very quickly. So, a few of the things we have already discussed eh, in between uh, the things. So, we want to say that tomorrow uh, your topics uh, will be up to the mark, and I don't have to repeat uh, the things there. So, uh, quality wise, uh, mechanics of writing, grammatical correctness, everything you have to see that your writing in topic is proper. The same thing in questions also. When you put a question, you have to see that the mechanics of writing, grammatical correctness, and even the quality of question. The question should emerge from what is presented, not from anywhere or anything. It should be from some of the slides which are present. So you can connect that in so and so slide, you are talking about this. Can you tell something more about so and so things? That way. So ask questions from what is presented, not randomly from anything. So that way, quality of question, correctness of question also you have to see. And tomorrow you have to try to handle on your own this. But tomorrow, if you are not able to, you will get a help. But uh, uh, after that, we'll have a break of uh, four or five days. So when we meet again on uh, 8th for the next one, at that time, no help will be given. So between all these days, come and practice in the lab. You can start a stream yard. And some Javim Tama start Karine, Arasparas Badajama, a demonstration Karisa, practice Karisaka. Akayo Dagi not on a thicky go Tijorima Mukine Jai, Pasiki go Tijorima Colin Apeto, my opio Karisaki, Yoto Kaisenia. Abudu Emnum virtual world ma who pedu him, Jene Kalu e Kole, practice Karile, Jarek Ruetia. Aviko was to not thicky, Pella by Ave, Chavi Ape, Koli, Toja Pren opio Karisaki, Yuka Sucheni. Uh, sit in the lab, ne, practice uh, the thing. Neither chone sat tarika, but do set up Pachukaru for second youth festival ma, Ajaga quiz nebutis perdata, said Lepachubudu, Bagri just. Let Tarepontame Agladi Savine practice Karisa, sixth and seventh, Bene divasas. Atmitareke, Tame Jate Kartahova Jui, Koi Bull Wugger, without any mistake that you have to uh, display and on last two days there. Okay? Some of you are still citing study material websites. So that you have to avoid citing study material websites. Jehoi a site Nathi Karwani, Spark Notes Hoi, Kebija Koipon Eprakarni website Hoite. Some of you are citing from JSTOR, that is good uh, uh, citation from journals and other thing that is done. So that is a good citation that you are doing. And okay, fine. So uh, some of you cited well, like Jay Solanki had a good citations, uh, but you have not cited that inside the text. You have to do it at both the places, inside as well as at the end uh, uh, also. Okay, fine. So we end uh, uh, this session here.